how did you get to get the idea for your business? Um, so I was working from home. Um, and when it started getting busier and there was like an influx in appointments, I realized that I needed to come up with, you know, another alternative plan. Um, I couldn't just keep doing that. So um, I kept brainstorming about what my next steps would be. And I, you know, started thinking about working out of another salon. Um, I tried that briefly, you remember? <laughs> I tried that for a little while. Um, and it just wasn't the, the vibe I was going for with my services. And I felt that immediately, like that wasn't like how I wanted my services to be projected. Um, so I went back to the drawing board. Um, I attempted to do my services out of another med spa and I just felt like I kept waiting on other people. Like I was at everybody else's mercy when it came to growing my business because I was relying on other people to do so. So when that finally hit me, I was, I just realized that the path for me was just going to be to open my own place because I had, you know, my ideas and my goals. Um, and I wanted to be able to execute them in my own time. So um, I had never planned on opening a full medical spa at this point in my life, but that is ultimately the direction I wanted to go in. So I just went for it because it's what I wanted to ultimately do. So it happened. <laughs> no, that's, that's awesome. Um, do you guys have anything new on the horizon? Um, so I'm currently working on taking our business more virtual. I think that's the direction that, you know, things are going in in general. It's 2020. Everybody wants to do things from home. Everybody wants to be able to do things at the touch of a finger. So I feel like um, if businesses are not going in that direction, then they're kind of hindering their growth. So um, trying to, you know, come up with different ways to do that. Um, one of the ways that I was doing that was, you know, I revamped my entire website so that now I have an online shop. So that's new. We launched that a couple of weeks ago. So now we're selling um, products that we use at the shop and different kits uh, to do services that you would normally get done at the shop at home. So we are offering those online now. Um, and then there's another thing that I'm actually going to be launching really soon that I'm excited about, but I can't really say what exactly it is. So if you're not following my business Instagram, make sure you are because in the next few weeks I will be um putting up a contest um that has to do with this amazing product um and you can win a chance to get it for free that's awesome yeah that's so. i'm really excited about that we're gonna have to talk about that later on <laughs> <laughs> but what do you attribute to success i mean honestly i think that if anybody is ever going to be successful in anything, they just need to stay um, super consistent and make sure that they are putting in the work all the time. And you know that, like, you're literally only going to get anywhere is if you just keep going. And I feel like that's the hardest part, but it's also the most important part. And I am extremely stubborn. So <laughs> I do not give up on anything that I want to be doing. Um, I have a lot of anxiety, so I don't like stopping until things are done, which it sucks in every aspect of my life. But with my business, it's actually uh, super beneficial because I make sure that I keep going. And I feel like um, it's really hard when you are your own boss in that respect because you don't have anybody pushing you. Um, you're creating your own goals. So um, you have to make sure you're meeting your own goals all the time. Um, that's really hard to set for yourself when life is crazy and, you know, you have a lot going on and maybe you're not in the right state of mind. I know a lot of people during this period with the quarantine are not, you know, very motivated. So it's, it's difficult, but, um, it's extremely important. And I think that sticking to the same thing every day and staying, um, innovative is what you have to do. Innovation is definitely key in today's society. Because of that, do you have any... Do you have any specific advice for people on, you know, what they should be doing right now during the quarantine since they um, can't see their local institution? Honestly, people should be doing their best to follow through with any of the services that they were receiving. Um, I know it's difficult to do since you're not coming in to get them anymore, but 
Um, like for instance, if you were in the middle of getting consistent facials, you want to still make sure you're doing the basic things at home to take care of your skin, which you should be doing anyway. But I know a lot of people rely on, you know, their, their service appointments to fully accommodate them and they don't do things at home. But this is super important, especially now, because if you're not taking care of your skin, then you're going to come back and be kind of starting from square one. So making sure that you do things like exfoliating, um, you know, at least once or twice a week, um, using moisturizer all the time, every day, sunscreen, even when you're, you know, just sitting in front of the window, those things are important um, to help you get right back on track and pick up where you left off with your services. We've been, you know, putting out a lot of different material and a lot of different um, things for people to use while at home. So well, what do you, um, when you hire somebody, what exactly do you look for an employee? Um, so we've only opened in November and I have to say it's been like a crazy ride from that point, um, with hiring. And I'm sure people who, you know, um, avidly follow my social media know that, um, I've had some different people in and out. Um, things don't really work out. <laughs> they really don't. I feel like people don't care about your business the way that you do. And that, that I learned pretty quickly. Um, I've now realized that the main thing that I look for in somebody is that they're willing to put in hard work when there is not immediate gratification. Um, I mean, in general, it's hard to find somebody who's hardworking, but if you're showing me off the bat that you're willing to do things um, to see you grow, to see the business grow, and you're not looking for something in return in that moment, you see that, you know, this is an investment um, and you're not looking for me to um, be the sole provider of your success, then I'm immediately, you know, going to respect the crap out of you because that is so hard to find. Like, I've worked with so many different kinds of professionals at this point and everybody wants the results from it immediately. Like I only have, you know, so much pull when it comes to someone else's services and someone else's, you know, success. And I am very hardworking. So I will literally do anything I can to make sure that somebody is achieving all of their goals in my salon. But at the end of the day, it's still your personal business. You're still an independent contractor. You're still an individual and you're providing your own services. You have to be able to give the same love to that marketing and to that, you know, to those, um, to those strategies as I do, like it takes work when you're not working. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Um, so, I mean, what are, what are your responsibilities as a, as the owner of the business? Um, everything. And you know, that <laughs> everything we do, everything, um, when you're a business owner at the end of the day, it still comes back to you because even at this point, when I have had people helping me in certain areas, mm -hmm. I still have to go back in and fix it because again, nobody cares about your business the way that you do. So you kind of have to make sure that <laughs> it's as perfect as you want it to be. So that sucks. Um, <laughs> but I do everything I do, you know, marketing, I've Basically, I built my entire website, which I have a lot of people ask me all the time, like, oh, who did your website? Like, blah, blah, blah. I, I did it. I taught myself everything that I know with marketing, with my website, with um, social media and advertisements. I mean, I'm the receptionist. I'm everything. I do <laughs> inventory, hiring, firing, <laughs> everything. So um, it's overwhelming. But, you know, just you have to try and stay organized and make more money so you can hire more people. <laughs> Um, so what were your, what were your goals when you first started this business and how has it changed since COVID? Um, what are my goals? Um, I mean, I was hoping by now we would be, you know, fully functioning and running and all the services would kind of be in place and, um, it would kind of be at this point, my job would just be managing it and maintaining it and seeing that things are going smoothly which is not the case um, because of it. I am still kind of in the um, development process, I guess. Like, you know, I'm still trying to work on new projects because I have to stay moving. I have to stay innovating like we talked about, but I'm still also finishing that project. Like I'm still trying to solidify every aspect of, of my med spa, which because I'm trying to offer so many different services and do so many different things there, it's, 
extremely challenging to make sure I have, you know, everybody I need on staff, um, have everything flowing the right way and all of these procedures in place so that I don't have to be micromanaging each and every one of them. So um, it's, it definitely, you know, halted the growth of my business in that respect. Um, but I will say it's given me time to organize my own ideas because um, I think you're the same way. Like my mind is always moving. And I think that's just an entrepreneurial mindset where you're constantly thinking. And I think it has to be that way. So sometimes you can get, you can overwhelm yourself with how many ideas you put on yourself and on the horizon. And you're like, I'm going to do that. And I want to do that. And I want to get involved in that. And I want to do that. So I kind of got overwhelmed that I noticed I started stepping away from the things that were going to involve a lot more work. And now I'm able to kind of go back to the drawing board and be like, okay, I have the time now to like, look at this idea and think about how to put it into action, put all my energy into that and then move on to the next idea. Because I feel like, you know, things are kind of at a standstill. So I'm using that time to try and, you know, get everything organized. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if Chris covered this, but did he ask you like how you got started with skin? Like before you became a business owner yourself? Um, with skin. So I went to cosmetology school. I thought I was going to be a hairdresser. Um, and I worked in a hair salon for a couple of years and realized I absolutely hated it. Um, and then I got a job at European Wax Center, um, and I worked there, um, for seven years. And that's kind of how I got into skin, really. Like, I, I really thought I was going to do hair, even though I kind of sucked. Um, <laughs> and then when I started working at European Wax Center, um, you know, you get really like when you're doing something all the time, even waxing, you're getting really comfortable with skin and the way that it's reacting to the service and the way it's reacting to different products. So it just kind of gradually happened on its own. Like I just kept, you know, getting more and more familiar with skin. And before I knew it, like I kind of had, a, I knew a solution, you know, to everything. So I started, you know, like studying it more and decided to like try facials and, you know, started doing different things. And I just really, I realized I was better at it. That's what the truth is. <laughs> I'm glad you decided that. Seven years is a long time. And I know yeah. um, it's just not the same until you own your own business, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, people go to school like and for years and then get, and, you know, into their field and realize that they hate it. Oh, yeah. Like you don't, you don't know if you like something until you're doing it, you know? So um, I guess I learned that by realizing I didn't like doing hair and I learned I do like skin by waxing, you know, you don't really know until you're doing it. I got a facial like a few months ago. And I think what I didn't expect was to be so red afterwards. I think Chris, I was like, Chris, I can't come into the office the next day because my face was completely red. So if you had somebody coming in planning like to get an extraction, um, like a facial, how many days ahead of an event would you suggest coming in? I would say a week, honestly, to be oh. safe, especially if it's your first facial. Um, if you have gotten them regularly, you could probably do it a few days before because your skin's more used to doing that. Um, but anything that's completely new and like it's something that you do rarely, I definitely suggest giving it about a week. But so in terms of like deciding what kind of facial you need, would you rec would you suggest to somebody like when life's all normal again to stop by and do you take a look at their skin and make suggestions or do people just kind of go on your website? How does yeah, it so I mean, people can definitely visit the website and see like which services we offer. Um, but it definitely comes down to like everybody's skin is different, so everybody needs a consultation. That's for most of our services. So, um, if you see something on my website that's a starting at like for prices, that's because everything is customized. So, um, that is the benefit of doing things, you know, in a salon with a professional versus at home is that, um, you're going to have that consultation and things are going to be, um, designed for your skin. So, you know, it, yeah, it definitely depends on, you know, what kind of skin you have and like, you know, your professional would have a conversation with you about your lifestyle and, you know, the kinds of things um, that your skin normally reacts to um, positively and negatively, you know, so there's, de there's definitely different, different things that have to be done. Hey, everybody. Bye. Bye.